What do pilots do when they can't fly? Either have a nice holiday, but if they're aviation nuts like me, they spend time in the simulator. Today we're going to take a look at the Milan Flight Group Crosswind Version 2 Rudder Pedal Upgrade. Coming up. I want to talk about why did I need to buy new rudder pedals in the first place? What was the reason? This cable right here. This cable is responsible for communicating when you depress the toe brake and there's a wire that goes down from that sensor and it goes through the assembly in the middle and into the control board that communicates uh, to the USB. So I guess that would be right around here. But unfortunately what happens from using the yaw on these pedals, I don't know what causes this happening. I don't know if it's because you're braking and yawing at the same time. I don't know what combination of things makes that happen, but basically it just cuts these three wires off. And so when you go look inside and you, you check what's going on, you're going to find out these are cut. For those of you who don't have much experience fixing electronics, these little speaker wire type wires are very difficult to solder. I actually did try to fix this and I have to confess I wasn't able to do it. I think if I was to spend a whole bunch of time trying to learn a new skill about how to wire, how to solder these little wires, I could probably pull it off. But the essential problem is, is that there's a plastic coating that's on these wires and you have to melt it off and it's just very difficult without contaminating the wire itself. So I'm sure somebody can put in the comments maybe a reference to another video that teaches you how to do that. But in my case, I just came to the conclusion that I wasn't going to spend the time to fix this broken cable. So if you're not going to do that, you have a few options. One is you buy new pedals. You could buy the exact same ones, right? And then you'd have spare parts on this one. Or you go out and buy a different product. So that's what compelled me to buy another product because I realized that this toe brake for flying airplanes is particularly important because when you're in a real airplane, each toe brake independently operates the left and the right side of the airplane. So if I'm coming down to taxi and I go to depress both brakes and this isn't working, what's going to happen in the simulator is the airplane's only going to brake on one side and it's going to turn. So if I'm doing like an emergency simulation, I need to do differential braking or I need both brakes at the same time, that could result in a disaster. So it's not really going to simulate real life. Um, and then in other games, you might use that toe brake for some other purpose. So that's why I ended up uh, deciding to try the Milan Flight Group uh, rudder pedals. Okay, now that we have the MFG crosswind assembled, we'll just make a quick comparison. So with the Pro Flight rudder pedals. So what we have over here is this is the pedal for the um, Pro Flight. And as you can see, it has three settings here for the length of your foot. So maybe for children, um, this might be an advantage because if someone has a very small short foot Then this has a smaller profile obviously than this now ostensibly you could take this pedal off and replace it with something else But I'm not aware that you can order such a thing. It definitely didn't come with an adjustment. So Right off the bat. I would say this foot pedal is better uh, for children this part right here Next, you have the tensioning of the yaw, which is the moving of the pedals back and forth like this. On this one, it's a very easy, um, you can kind of adjust it on the fly just by turning your hand here. This makes it uh, tighter. This makes it looser. Interesting. Very easy to do. Now, on this one, you have, on the MFG crosswind, you have a little knob that you turn down here in the front. And as you tighten the nut, it puts more tension on the spring and you have an ability to move the spring in and out on the, um, the arm that's at the back. So I think this has probably a wider range of tension than this one does. Um, but the MFG is definitely a little, well, it's arguable. I would say that for me, it's very convenient to just turn this knob. Some people might find that annoying. They might like this big knob in the center. However, I have to say turning this little uh, nut here is actually a, was a lot easier than turning this. This one kind of got stuck when I tried to move it. Okay, so other than that, I don't see any other real differences here. 
in terms of the operation you know from a construction perspective right off the bat this one has a little power light on there the m f g does not have a power light don't know why you particularly need that maybe it helps with troubleshooting i i don't know but uh... there's other ways to determine if something's working one advantage m f g for sure is that the u s b cable can be disconnected whereas on the pro flight rudder pedals it's soldered in and i remember that i had these pressed up against the wall and the cable was bent and i was starting to get worried that i was going to actually um, break the cable so on these ones less serviceable if you damage this usb cable you're going to have to take it apart and solder a new one in i don't think most people want to do that so definitely there's a big advantage on the mfg to having a, a cable that you can disconnect this one also has four screws uh, on each side in order to mount the pedals down the mfg only has four holes in the center I guess that's just a function of how your setup is. Um, but one advantage of the MFG for sure is that you've got these little spacers that you can adjust by loosening these nuts. You can move them in and out, or you could fabricate your own piece if you needed a, a further length. And I think that's a big advantage because when I was using these rudder pedals, these uh, Pro Flight ones, I had to put like a toolbox. I actually have a socket set um behind them so that way i could space them off the wall because you know if you put them up against the wall they're just going to be too far away so having said that i'm not noticing much other difference here okay we covered the cable the spacer the pedal differences and the tensioner difference so without further ado we're going to take these on down to the flight simulator plug them in and see how these new ones uh, calibrate and work all right, here's what we're gonna do. I've attached the rudder pedals. I've attached my flight controls. So this is my throttle quadrant. This is my yoke. They're both from Precision Flight Controls and they're being held on by the 3M dual lock. So these detach from the table when I'm done. We have flaps, which you can't see, unfortunately. <laughs> then we have uh, these two levers are the only ones we're gonna use for the Cessna. We're using this one for throttle, this one for mixture. And we've got the nice rudder pedals with the toe brakes going on the bottom there. All right, so we're inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 here. And I'm going to show you how you set up the MFG Crosswind version 2. So you're going to have them in here. And basically what you need to do is you need to add the left brake axis on the joystick L axis X, the right brake axis on joystick L axis Y, Okay, so that's going to cover your toe brake. So that's the left toe brake. You can see the little bar going across. This is the right toe brake that's going across. And then you want under um, primary control services, the rudder axis. And here you're going to see me controlling that. So I'm going left and right. So you can see everything's looking great. All right, so all that is set up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make a flight. We don't need any more settings. Let's get out of here. Okay, so I'm full throttle. Left toe brake, turn me to the left. Right toe brake, turn me to the right. Rudder right, rudder left. Okay, now we're gonna lift the nose up a little bit. Just get ourselves into the air. I'm using a little bit of right rudder. Okay, we're, we're in ground effect. We're going down the runway at Mon Montreal International Airport. Okay, now I'm going to cut the power and bring us down and hope that we have enough runway left to do this. Okay, coming down. Ooh, that was a little rough it sounded. Woo, okay. Applying the toe brakes, pulling back on the ailerons. Okay, releasing the left one, releasing the right one. Turning left, turning right. Everything looks good. I had to adjust the spring tension a little bit because they felt a little bit stiff for what I was doing. All right, now, just for fun, let's see, let's see how good this Cessna 172 is. We're gonna do a short field takeoff at night from Montreal International Airport with a very little amount of runway remaining, it looks like. Okay, here we go. So we're gonna bring our flaps down. Now in the airplane, you can see that over here on the right, these are the flaps. I'm gonna give us flaps 10. 
Okay. Now here we go. Full throttle. The brakes are applied. And we're rolling. Give a little bit of right rudder. Okay, we're at the rotation speed. I'm gonna pull the nose up, we're off the runway, excellent. And I'm gonna lift my flaps up while I'm in the ground effect. Coming to the end of the runway here. And we're gonna climb out. We had plenty of runway. Since there's no wind, we'll just climb to a thousand feet, and we'll t we'll just climb to a thousand feet, and we're going to turn around and we're going to land back on that runway that we just departed on. Make sure the flaps are all the way up. So you can see down here, the flaps are up. Okay, I'm going to make a little turn, a little teardrop turn. That looks like Mont Royal in Montreal ahead of us. Okay, now we're going to just turn around back to the runway. Nice, gentle turn. See the runway? Where's the runway? Oh, there's an air, airplane over there. Okay, there's, okay, there's our runway. <clears throat> All right, we're going to cut our power back. We wouldn't ever do this in the real world at the Montreal International Airport, but... That's why we use a simulator, so we can do crazy things we wouldn't normally do. Okay. We're coming in. We're definitely good. I'm going to cut the power. I'm going to give us full flaps. I'm going to put us into a slip. We need to be a little more to the right. There, it's coming in nicely. So fortunately for us, this is a super long runway. Okay, down we go. Nice and gentle. Okay, we apply our brakes. And we pull back on our ailerons. We pull the yoke back, rather. I meant to say elevator. <laughs> yeah, so we pulled back on the elevator, and it's brought us to, uh, and then just a little tap of the brakes there, we've come to a complete stop. All right, thank you for watching. This concludes our review of the MFG um, rudder pedals. I like them so far. I'm going to be tweaking them in the, uh, in the week to come to get them to feel exactly like the real aircraft, but I do like the sensitivity of them. And I have to say, I like that there's all the customizations that you can do with the tensions. So I'm very confident that in a short while, I'll be able to make these pedals feel exactly like the real airplane. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Catch you next time.